This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. Hey guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Today in this video, I just wanted to talk about some of the latest changes and feature updates to my dojo scripts that you can get at creativedojo.net. They're absolutely free. Now usually I don't like to make these kind of update videos, but I think this time around you guys are gonna like some of the new features and updates I added to the scripts. So I wanted to talk about them today in this video. So this time around I actually updated all three of the scripts. That includes the Dojo Toolkit, the Dojo Extruder, and the Dojo Glitch script. So let's go and take a look at some of the changes in the Dojo Extruder script first. So the first thing you're going to notice that's different is the whole new UI of the script here. We have a new banner. We have the new help button right here that's added to the header. And we also kind of compacted the whole script because the problem I was facing was that even with, you know, dual monitors and a lot of space, I just didn't like having a whole bunch of large palettes or windows kind of just laying around my workflow. I really want to conserve my workflow and only have what's really essential on my screen. And this is why I decided to really just change the whole UI for pretty much all my scripts so it's a little bit more compact and not as bulky and large as the previous versions of these scripts. So all the scripts have been redesigned to be a little bit more compact, especially the Dojo Toolkit. So aside from the UI and visual changes, you're also going to see that I also changed a lot of how the script actually functions and behaves. And the most important feature about the Dojo Extruder that you guys have been requesting is multiple extrusions at once. So before we had to go ahead and select one layer at a time and hit extrude, select the next layer and hit extrude, and they were all linked to one control null, which controlled pretty much everything. Now we have the option to select all of our layers here. So I have this text 01 layer here, which is a composition um, from our previous tutorial on the Dojo Extruder. So pretty much just two text layers with the stroke on the outside here. We have the Dojo Extruder text here uh, called text 01 layer. We also have a second text here called the Creative Dojo text 02 layer. And so now with the new update to Dojo Extruder, we can actually select all of the layers that we want to extrude. This can be three, five, you know, an unlimited number of layers here. We can select them all. So I'm going to keep the number of extrusion copies to 40, select all of our layers, and go ahead and hit Extrude. Now before you hit Extrude, if you're extruding a lot of layers, this can be a pretty intensive process because we are duplicating a lot of layers. So what I recommend you do if you're duplicating a lot of intensive layers with a lot of effects and stuff like that, is to go ahead and turn on the caps lock or close the composition window. That way your After Effects doesn't have to render all the changes up. And it'll be able to execute the commands a little bit faster without having to render the preview. But in this case, we only have two layers here, so I'm gonna hit Generate Extrusion. And you're gonna see that the Dojo Extruder is gonna be extruding both of the text layers that we selected. And we get a confirmation here. And so not only are both of our text layers extruded, but we also have separate controllers here. But we also have separate controllers, and this is one of the things that you guys really request as well. You guys want to control over the individual layers, you want to multiple control nulls. So after recoding everything, we now have separate control nulls. We can actually control the individual properties and settings of the individual layers here. So for example, I have the text 01 control here, which controls just the text 01, the Dojo Extruder text. I'm going to go ahead and perhaps set the extrusion depth to 4. You can see that it only changes the Dojo Extruder text here, layer here. We can change the bevel to 2.5. We can change the lighting amount to like 3. Shading hardness down to like 0.3. And as you can see, all those changes only apply to the Dojo Extruder text. And of course, we can move this null around and move the position, rotation, and that will move the whole Dojo Extruder layer as well. And we can go into the text 02 and manually change these differently. So we can set this to 3, set the bevel size down to like 1, the lighting amount down to like 0, and we'll just keep the shading hardness down to like maybe like 0.4. So as you can see, we can individually control the individual layers here and have finer control over everything. And also the controller names here, the you know, text 01 3D controls and the text 02 3D controls, they're also dynamic it updates with the original layer here. So this is pretty handy. Also, if you have any questions about the features or what these options do, you can always go to the help button here and click on the question mark button. And this has been kind of redesigned as well. All these scripts now have full documentations within this help window here, so you can actually read about every single feature, option, setting in the script on all my scripts by going to the help button here. It has a few, a few descriptions and examples and explanations about what everything does here. So this is just a nice way for you to read everything and understand it if you have any questions. So these are just some of the changes I made to the Dojo Extruder. 
You know, not the most radical change for this particular script, but you'll see in a second about the other scripts. You can view the full change log on my site at the Creative Dojo. Let's go ahead and move on to the Dojo glitch script. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go and pre-compose our 3D text into one layer here. So I'm going to select all the duplicate copies of text 01, as well as the controls. I'll go to layer, pre-compose, and we'll call this text 01 3D. Hit OK. And this is essentially just going to find everything out. And I'll do the same thing for the text 02 here and just select the controller and go to layer, pre-compose, and we'll call this text 02 3D. So now we have our 3D text in just a pretty simple composition here. I'm going to open the Dojo Glitch script. And as you can see, the UI for this script has been pretty much compressed as well. And just like the Dojo Extruder script, we can actually select all the layers that we want to glitch. And we can actually glitch multiple layers at once with dynamic titles and dynamic no controller names. So we'll select all of our layers that we want to glitch. And I'm going to go ahead and select the Shy option here. I'm going to hit Generate Glitch. We get a confirmation. And as you can see, we actually glitch both of our layers simultaneously to save time. We also shied our layers here. So what this does is actually shies the green channel and the blue channel. And it only leaves the red channel showing, not necessarily because it's more important, but just because it kind of just simplifies everything and you know allows you to have a cleaner timeline to work with here. So I'm going to close the Dojo glitch script here. Now let's take a look at what's new. So as you can see, dynamic titles, things have been renamed, and things are more dynamic. Some of the default values have been tweaked, such as the master glitch amount and the flicker amount by default. But the one feature that I really, really want to share with you guys is something that I think really improves the script a lot significantly. And that is the artifact displacement here. So for an example, I'm just going to turn off a text 02 layer. And I just want to focus on the Dojo Extruder text here, just to simplify this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn up the master glitch amount to maybe like 25. So we can kind of see the RGB split here. And then before, if we wanted to kind of create a more realistic glitch, we would have the artifact brightness right here. And if we turn that brightness up, you can see that we start to get this kind of deletion, kind of pixelated look. And essentially what this does is it kind of masks out certain portions of the glitch here. And this is okay, but then I was looking at this and I was just like, man, this doesn't look very realistic. It can be a lot better and it doesn't really look like a glitch. So I implemented a kind of new feature here called the displacement. And watch what happens when I go ahead and increase the artifact displacement here. As you can see, we really, really start to mess this thing up and create this really digital glitchy artifact displacement and as you can see things look very very glitched things look very very distorted like it's kind of some kind of interference and and just digital mess and i think this really really sells the effect a lot better than just the artifact brightness so if we set this down to zero this is what we had before with the artifact brightness now if we increase the displacement we can see that we have a lot better glitch here and we can also control the displacement on the X axis as well as the Y axis. Now the artifact displacement and Y displacement is totally dependent on the artifact brightness. If we do not have the artifact brightness, we're not really going to have a proper displacement. So in order to use the, the displacement here, you need to have artifact brightness turned up. You need to see the artifact brightness first before you can displace it. And that's just because um, this whole thing uses the same matte. So if we turn off the master glitch amount to like zero and we go ahead and increase the X displacement, you can see that you can create some pretty interesting distorted glitches here. And this would look really, really cool for maybe like game montages or trailers or whatever you want to use this with. But this is kind of a nice way to just offset things and create some kind of digital distortion. And this really sells the effect a lot better, I think, for the Dojo glitch. Before we take a look at the Dojo toolkit, I want to go ahead and thank our sponsors, Squarespace, for making this video possible today. Squarespace is the only one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional online website, store, or portfolio. They have over 20 highly customizable and professionally designed templates. With their click and drag interface, adding content is a breeze. They also recently released something really cool called Squarespace Logo, which allows you to create a logo and branding for your website or business. 
And when you do decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use promo code DOJO1 to get 10% off the life of your order and support the dojo. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. So that was the Dojo Glitch script. Let's go and take a look at the Dojo Toolkit script, which is probably the most radical change script out of the three. As you can see, the UI is completely different. We have very, very compact buttons here. Everything is abbreviated into three letter kind of words. So for example, this is the camera rig, this is the grain, this is element 3D, this is to add a solid adjustment layer null. And again, if you have any questions about what these mean, it's always in the help button here. I really wanted to compact all the dojo scripts, so the dojo toolkit was actually one of the largest scripts that I had, so I really, really wanted to compact it down, and this is a significant size, I guess, downgrade to the whole script, so this is a pretty nice, clean way of working with it, and I think it's better because there's no reason to have large buttons for these kind of things, so same features here, we have the add new feature, which if you're not familiar with the last update, this was added pretty recently ago, but the biggest change here is the addition to the expressions tab. Before we had buttons for these things, now we have these fancy little drop down menus and we have a lot more expression presets to work with here. So for an example, we have the new uh, bouncy ball, we have the loop in, loop out, pendulum, and the squash and stretch. And these, you know, you can probably try them out yourself. I don't want to go into them and explain what they do precisely. It's all in the help menu and they're pretty straightforward if you're familiar with expressions. Um, same thing with the easing expressions here. There aren't any new ones for the easing expressions, but they're all kind of compact into this kind of drop down menu. You simply just select your layer or your property, hit apply, and it will apply the easing expressions that you have selected here. So that's pretty cool. Lastly, in the tools, things have been kind of renamed. The take screenshot now, you know, fully works with After Effects CC. There was a few issues before, but you know, now it's all worked out. Um, the folders generates a basic folder structure. The clean will remove all the unused footage and the purge will clear all the image cache. And as you saw, if you have any questions, you can go to the help menu or you can hover over the button and it will give you a kind of a nice handy tool tip help. And this applies for all the Dojo scripts. So I guess the biggest change in the Dojo toolkit is the whole UI change, how things were more simplified, the way they're organized, and the addition of new additional expression presets. And again, if, if you have any suggestions on new ones, please let me know in the comments down below. So that's pretty much it guys. If you want to view the full change log of everything that changed in these scripts, you can view it at the creativedojo.net. Now like I mentioned earlier, I had to pretty much rewrite a lot of these scripts and a lot of the features of these scripts pretty much from the ground up again. I really did have to change a lot of the core functions, a lot of the way the scripts behave, especially in the Dojo Extruder and the Glitch script. And the reason why I was able to pull all that off and really update all my scripts in a short time frame was because of the new pricing model of these scripts. Now these scripts are still absolutely free at the Creative Dojo, except now they're under the name your own price kind of platform where you can essentially pay whatever you want or donate whatever you want for these scripts. They're absolutely free. If you want to get it for free, just enter zero dollars into the price field. But if you want, you can actually donate you know one or two dollars for these scripts. And uh, that would really show a lot of support and also help me, you know, roll out updates more frequently. Now, ever since I did change to the Name Your Own Price platform, I've been getting a lot of, a lot of support from a lot of you guys, you know, donating, you know, a dollar, two dollars here, three dollars here. It really, really does help. It does really show your appreciation. And I really, really appreciate all the support that I've gotten, especially to all the donors who have been donating, uh, you know, a few bucks here and there for these scripts. And now I'm not necessarily asking for money. If you do find these scripts useful and you want to donate a few bucks, you know, the option is there to donate whatever you want. There's no minimum or anything like that. It's still absolutely free. So the small funds does actually help me roll out updates and roll out features a lot faster. and really encouraged me to continue updating these scripts, you know, to whatever you guys need or want in these scripts. And rest assured that more scripts are coming. I'm actually working on a few scripts right now that haven't been released yet. But they're pretty cool in my opinion and I can't wait to release them in the near future. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo. Hopefully you guys enjoy these scripts. You can get them at creativedojo.net. I'll see you guys next time in the next video.